Before the movie begins, we learn about a Japanese clan that has dedicated themselves to a secret art of self-defense and survival. The art is so lethal that it has rendered the clan unbeatable. The present day, they're referred to as ninjas. 25 years ago, an ancient legend of this sacred art came alive. It mentioned a foreign child who would come along with them and become a ninja master like no other. The movie begins as a clan of ninjas find an abandoned chest that has been washed onto the seashore. Surprisingly, the chest contains a white baby boy. One of their ancient legends, Sensei, predicts that the foreign boy will join them and become a legendary ninja, just like the prophecy had mentioned. However, as the white boy Haru grows older, Sensei's prediction proves to be a colossal failure due to Haru's clumsiness and lack of ninja skills. In the following scene, we're shown one of their rigorous training sessions. The ninjas are ordered to put their hands in hot charcoal, but Haru uses it to barbecue his vegetables. In the next training, the ninjas practice with nunchucks, but Haru nearly hangs himself with them. Later, the ninjas are instructed to lift a large vessel containing boiling water, but when it's Haru's turn, he makes another mess by spilling the hot water onto his ninja friends. The next day, Sensei teaches his students how to communicate with other ninjas by projecting themselves onto the Plane of Enlightenment. According to Sensei, by being on the Plane of Enlightenment, they can always contact each other no matter where they are. Haru once again exhibits clumsy behavior and misses the lesson. Later, Sensei awards the Tengu Warrior Medallion to all students who graduate to be a ninja. He then bestows the golden medallion, but only to the finest student, Gobei, who has been forged in the furnaces of confidence and discipline. However, Haru, due to his clumsiness, is unable to graduate with the rest of his class. Later that night, Sensei is preparing to take the ninjas to their new mission, but when Haru expresses his desire to join them, he refuses. Rather, Sensei instructs him to remain at the dojo and protect the village. As soon as they leave, Haru dresses himself as a ninja and begins wielding various weapons. Shortly after, an American girl named Sally Jones arrives at the dojo seeking assistance. Haru is instantly smitten by the lady, so he invites her inside and pretends to be a ninja. Expectedly, Sally doesn't believe him, so Haru shows her a holy writ in which it's stated that the white child will be the greatest ninja master. He also tries to impress her by using a variety of weapons, but ends up making a complete mess. Following this, Haru asks her why she came here, to which Sally responds that she's suspicious of her boyfriend, Martin. She wants Haru to investigate Martin's activities, and the latter agrees. The following day, Haru goes to the specified location to investigate Martin's truth. Upon reaching there, his outfit becomes stuck in the gate, causing him to hang on it. Haru is unable to enter the building through the front gate, so he sails on a boat and approaches it from the back. Inside the building, we find out that Martin is involved in a money counterfeiting business. Soon, a shady-looking man arrives and delivers some money plates, with the help of which Martin is planning to duplicate the money. However, when he realizes that the plates are only one-sided, he gets enraged and shoots the man. Unfortunately, the man falls from the building, lands on Haru's boat, and dies. Panicked, Haru rushes from the place, but some police officers notice him with the body and suspect him of murder. They try chasing him, but Haru somehow manages to escape. In the evening, Haru returns to the dojo where Sensei confronts him. He believes that the woman duped Haru because Gobei called the woman's hotel and discovered that there's no one by the name Sally Jones. However, Haru is certain that the woman is right and that she requires assistance. He then makes the decision to fly to America in order to save the woman. Sensei asks Haru what makes him think he can find the woman in America, to which Haru responds by showing a token that the woman handed him. The next day, Haru waves his final goodbyes to the clan, and before departing, Sensei hands him some gold coins, instructing him to use them only for necessities. As soon as he leaves, Sensei dispatches Gobei to keep an eye on Haru and protect him during his mission. 
Upon reaching the airport, Haru walks through the metal detector and it starts beeping. Consequently, the airport security asks him to empty his pockets, and Haru takes out his ninja blades before proceeding. Later in the flight, he speaks with a young boy and informs him that he's on a secret mission. He also threatens to kill anyone who interferes with his mission. Hearing this, the little boy becomes terrified and complains to his father. As a result, the father confronts Haru and punches him in the face. After a while, Haru exits the American airport and rents a car. As soon as he gets into the car, the seatbelt chokes him, but he believes someone has attacked him. He then grabs his knife and begins stabbing in random directions. After this, he heads towards Sally's hotel with Gobe following him as his shadow. When he arrives at the hotel, he removes his slippers outside and walks in. Unfortunately, a cleaner thinks the slipper is trash and takes it away. Following that, he goes to the customer service desk and inquires about Sally Jones. The receptionist checks on the computer and informs him that no one by that name exists in the hotel. Haru then spends some gold coins and books a hotel room. One of the members of the hotel staff named Joey leads Haru to his room. As soon as he enters the room, he begins to demonstrate his ninja skills and investigates his surroundings. When Joey notices this, he asks Haru if he's a spy, to which the latter replies that he's a ninja. Hearing this, Joey becomes excited and requests Haru to teach him some skills. Haru complies and starts showing some ninja sword techniques. In the next scene, Haru begins searching for Sally in the streets of America while Gobe is keeping an eye on him. A short while later, Gobe notices Sally in her car and punctures it, prompting Haru to notice her. Haru then approaches her and starts talking about the mission, but Sally mentions that she doesn't want his assistance any longer. Despite this, Haru believes she's faking it just to keep their mission a secret. Following this, he follows Martin and his assistant Nobu to a nightclub where he encounters some bar dancers. Haru is instantly attracted, so he starts dancing with the girls in a weird manner. Unfortunately, he's noticed by the bouncers and thrown out of the bar. Meanwhile, Martin and Nobu meet with another gangster named Mr. Ozaru in order to retrieve a set of counterfeiting plates. When the rival gangster refuses to hand over the counterfeiting plates, a fight ensues. Martin and Nobu shoot two rival gang members, causing their bodies to fall near Haru. The following morning, the police and news reporters arrive at the crime scene and consider Haru as the prime suspect. On the other hand, Haru returns to the hotel and uses a ninja technique to meet Sensei on the Plane of Enlightenment. Sensei suggests he use the phone log in order to track Martin and Sally. Later, Haru resumes his investigation and manages to locate Martin's mansion. As soon as he approaches the location, he notices Sally's arrival. Soon after, he finds a letter in Sally's car and learns that her real name is Allison Page. Enraged by the betrayal, Haru infiltrates the building and confronts Allison in her bedroom. Left with no options, Allison finally comes clean. She reveals that she is with Martin solely to discover the truth about her sister Carla's death, who worked for Martin. As the two are talking, Martin arrives, so Haru quickly hides inside the room. As soon as Martin leaves, Haru and Allison follow him to a restaurant. Haru disguises himself as a chef and pretends to work in front of Martin's table while Allison waits outside in her car. After some time, an armed rival gangster arrives at the restaurant in order to execute Martin. One of the gang members is about to shoot Martin, but just then, Haru unintentionally throws a knife, stabbing the gang member to death. This results in a massive brawl, but Allison somehow manages to save Haru. However, before they can flee, Martin notices Allison and deduces that she's been cheating on him. Following this, Haru drives Allison to the hotel and allows her to stay in his room. The next day, Haru learns that Martin will be hiring an ink specialist named Shet Walter to assist him in the counterfeiting business. Hence, he, along with Allison, visit Shet in his office and apprehend him. Shortly after, Martin arrives at the place and Haru, who's now disguised as Shet, meets him. 
Meanwhile, Allison continues to follow Martin's car. Upon arriving at a warehouse, Haru pretends to counterfeit the money while secretly stealing some money plates. Unfortunately, he's caught in the act and tied in the back of Martin's car. Later, Martin and his gang meet a rival gang in order to talk about the money plates. This time, Martin is successful in obtaining the other half of the plates from the rival gang. On the other hand, Allison arrives in her car and saves Haru. After getting free, he decides to catch Martin, but ends up falling into a ditch. The mission becomes even more difficult when Martin catches Allison calling the cops and kidnaps her. As soon as they leave, the cops arrive and arrest Haru for the entire crime. Fortunately, Gobe throws a smoke bomb and saves his friend, but he continues to hide himself from Haru. The next day, Haru prepares himself as a ninja by carrying all of his ninja weapons. He also summons Joey before heading to Allison's aid. They try to make their way to Martin's warehouse, but Haru cannot recall the exact directions. Because of this, Gobe has to once again help his friend, which he does without being seen. Upon arriving there, Haru discovers that the front gate is locked. So he climbs a tree, swings through the warehouse roof, and lands on one of the vehicles inside. He then begins fighting several gang members on his own. However, he's soon overpowered, prompting Gobe to intervene and finally reveal his presence. While Gobe is fighting with the gang members, Haru goes to save Allison, who's been tied in a room with a time bomb. Wasting no time, he uses a forklift to smash two holes in the room. He then attempts to defuse the bomb, but inadvertently ends up starting a five-minute timer. On the other hand, Gobe is getting overwhelmed by the large amounts of crooks he's fighting. When Haru hears his screams, he decides to leave Allison for the moment and help his friend first. Surprisingly, this time he becomes angry and starts displaying some incredible martial arts moves, stunning Gobe. And in just a matter of seconds, he wipes the floor with the entire gang and saves his friend. Following this, the two ninjas are up against Martin and Nobu. The duo manages to overpower Nobu, and now Haru is pitted against Martin one on one. Martin fires his gun at Haru, but the latter uses his ninja swords to deflect all of the bullets, forcing Martin to flee. As the action continues to unfold, the timer on the bomb is almost up. Hence, Haru quickly springs into action and shoots a large harpoon gun through the room. The harpoon drags the time bomb outside and surprisingly, it lands in the back of Martin's truck and explodes. Somehow, Martin manages to get out of the truck, but he's soon apprehended by the police. After the incident, Haru, along with Allison and Gobe, returns to Sensei. After an emotional conversation with his master, Haru mentions that he's decided to live in America with Allison. Sensei approves the decision, as he believes that Haru has now matured. Gobe, who's now in a wheelchair, also shows his appreciation by handing Haru his golden medallion. In the final scene, Haru and Allison board a bus to depart, but unfortunately, a grappling rope falls from the bus and hooks into Gobe's wheelchair he's dragged for some distance before eventually being thrown into the ocean. The movie ends as Haru shouts an apology, indicating that he is still the clumsy one.